Hello everyone. Um, after the last time, so I went around and looked a little bit more about how uh, I can achieve a better implementation of a round or rectangle mask. And uh, I came across STFs, which stands for sign distance fields. And you can also use this ones to create a more powerful mask. And I'm saying powerful because with this one, uh, you have the ability to control each corner's roundness value separately. And as you can see here, also everything is set to 0 0.1 here. And if you set this one to 0 0.25, you can see like this side at the bottom right has rounded half as much as the other three sides. And if you feel like it, you can just kind of like give 0 0.1 to all of this and you can achieve this kind of a shape. So um, how you create this is actually a function uh, that Inigo Quiles, uh, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, but he has uh, such an amazing resource here for 2D distance functions. And there are so many shapes here that you can use and experiment for your own purposes. But um, for our purpose, we are just going to use this one, the second one from the top called rounded box exact. And what you need to do is just copy this uh, function definition, uh, sorry, not function definition, uh, the implementation of the function, and just open your favorite text editor, paste this, align uh, everything. Oops. Go down. And there is one modification you need to do because this code here is written in GLSL, but Unreal Engine uses HLSL. And if you go to learn.microsoft.com, there is this uh, guide here that tells you like typical vector types in GLSL are vector two, three, and four. But in HLSL, it's flow two, three, and four. So what you need to do is uh, simply just change this vector two to flow two. Now this code is good to go for Unreal Engine. You can just close this. I apparently also had a previous uh, notepad open there from uh, another trial. And what you need to do is uh, I'm just going to disconnect uh, this ones here. And just put maybe around here somewhere. And I'm just going to create a custom node. And to this part where it says code, just copy paste everything. And I'll leave it here for now. But before that, um, if you look at your functions definition, we have three inputs and P here is a vector two that stands for the current point that we are evaluating. And B here stands for the dimensions of our rectangle, uh, which is width and length. And R here is a vector four that contains the roundness information of each corner. And implementation just uses these values to simply sizzle the channels of the roundness vector based on uh, which quadrant you are in, then carries everything to the first quadrant to uh, make the same evaluation there, and then just achieve symmetrical, uh, just kind of copy everything over to its own quadrant. Think of it that way. And then you have the STF function here, which gives you uh, whether a given point is within the rectangle or not and also adding the roundness value into it. So going back to Unreal Engine, so our first input is going to be P, and I'm going to add two more. Second one is B, and the third one is R. So I'm going to start with P, which is the point that we are evaluating, and obviously it's just going to be our UV coordinates. But I'm going to add a constant bias scale to this of minus 0.5 and scale of 2 to achieve, uh, to move everything into the center. So simply right now, this is uh, moving, this is changing from minus 1 to 1 in each axis. And I'm also going to add a multiply here because we need to scale these points later on. Uh, because if you think about it, so this is now a 1 to 1. Uh, ratio, but your UI elements can be something like this or uh, vice versa, especially like if you're creating a button, for example. So you have to scale these coordinates based on uh, the scale of your 
user interface element. And how we are going to achieve this is uh, there's a material function called get uh, in user interface UV. And this gives you the size of your uh, the screen space size of the element that this material is currently using. This material is currently being used in. So in this case, it's going to give us 500 by 250. And if you look at inside, it's actually just a texture coordinate node with a coordinate index of 3. So if you want, you can also use that one directly. Uh, but for your readability, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And the process goes as breaking these two uh, components into individual channels. And then we are going to add two divides. And the first one, we are going to divide R by G. And the second one, we are going to divide G by R. And I am going to append this into a vector too. And I'm going to saturate the result. So eventually what we are doing here is, so in here we have, let's talk about this case. Uh, so we divide 500 by 250, so it's going to be 2. And then we divide 250 by 500, which is going to be 0 0.5. And when we saturate this, we clump everything between 0 to 1. So this vector for this user element becomes 1 and two point, uh, sorry, 0 0.5. So meaning your shorter side is two times the size of your longer size, and which is correct in this case. So our shorter side here, our uh, length, is uh, half of our width. Or vice versa so our width is two times of our length and that's what we want to use to scale our coordinates in the first place but also the good thing is since we are going to use more of a normalized clamp uh, coordinate system so we can also use this as our dimensions so this one is now we are not using 500 by 250 but we are just using uh, 1 to 0 0.5 in here so everything is in a way uh, clamp to run to 0 to 1 range which is uh, simply what we want and the last part is adding the r here and i'm going to give this uh, 0 0.5 in all sides and you can connect this uh, but then you're going to see what's going to happen i believe yeah so you can have it like this and it works but let's see 250 works 50 by 100 yep it works and then we are gonna add a smooth step into this and ideally you can just like give it a very small value all right 0 0.0, 0 0.0 one is okay and connect this to your final color and here you go you have your Round or rectangle, but let's give it a one. So I'm trying, maybe if we can get it. Yeah, so this is not a round or rectangle anymore when you go to one, and it's because the the values are not scaled according to the the user interface widget that we are displaying. So if I make this 500, you can get the perfect circle, but anything that is not a one to one ratio, uh, it's just gonna cause problems, as you can see. So I'm going to also uh, scale the, the roundness values, our roundness vector here. And to achieve that, so I'm going to break out the components again in here, which is uh, for this one, it's 1 to 0 0.5. And I'm going to get the minimum. So this is going to return me the shortest side, the ratio of the shortest side. And I'm just going to multiply this uh, vector here with the minimum value that's coming uh, out from this here and then if i plug it into r well and your scaling your roundness is uh happening based on your sh the shortest side of your widget element so if i put this to 500 i'm still getting uh the circle which because our minimum here is just going to be one and if i set this to 50 or like 125 i'm still getting the desired results everything is scaled according to the shortest side but obviously you don't want this one to be your final color so you want to use this as opacity masks and as it is uh, this one will give you the outside but oftentimes uh you want 
what is going to be displayed so you can either use one minus for that so just reverse everything or uh, i prefer to reverse this min max values uh, and it gives you the same result anyways so yeah, let's just give it a pretty color here this is something like pink so you can see these and here you go so this is the whole implementation now uh if i take this back and connect this uh you see i also have actually a border here so i'm gonna return this back to 0 0.5 here you go and the reason for that is like in here i added two more things uh one is yeah the border thickness value here so you can uh, control it let's say if it's 0 0.01 so you get a thinner border or you can make it 1, 0, 2, it's going to be a really thick border around it. And uh, let's give it 0, 0, 1. Uh, maybe 2. Maybe 2 is good. It's easier to see. And the second thing is like I also added a scale value here. So if I want, I can scale this. And yeah, it just scales the whole thing as it is. And how I achieve this is if I go back to the material function. So after the coordinates, uh, I added the scale UV by center. Oops, and then I pass it to the constant bias scale. I also output this mask in case I uh, need it. And the roundness is uh, saturated. That's one more thing that I added because I don't want it to be uh, more than one in my case. And border thickness is here. So after the custom node, this is the one that we just implemented that gives us uh, the background. The mask for the background and then uh, this custom node goes through an absolute node and then i subtract a value which is going to define the thickness of our border and then i add another smooth step and then just output it and how i use it is uh, simply the border is just just a loop between two colors the second one is uh, being the border color let me just uh, put this back to one and the opacity is just coming out from the background so you can just use that uh, ideally you can also make this another translucent but a mask uh, one but i think mask is just it's either one zero or one so if you look at the yeah the corners you can see you get a bit of a pixelation but instead if you go for the translucent here yeah you have a bit more of a blur you can just use yeah because that's how the, the stf is working right um yeah and that's it i honestly think this is a way better approach uh and i don't know if someone can compare the performance of this with the previous approach i would be really happy i don't think i had the necessary expertise for that to go to um assembly and compare the instructions but that would be a nice thing i guess and yeah as always if you have anything uh to discuss to make a comment below uh at the comment section and i'm always happy to chit chat about anything so have a nice day everyone